All right, you guys, I'm going to work at uh, 1998. Number one, this is a calculator question, so I went ahead and I graphed it. Um, our point of intersection is 4, 2. We're, um, we're graphing the, the, the curve y equals square root of x, and we're going to go from 0 to 4, and that's the area that we're looking for. So we're going to simply do area is going to be, so it's going from 0 to 4, and then it's going to be the upper curve, so root x minus the lower curve, which is 0 dx. And then I'm just going to plug this into my calculator. So we're going to get the area is 0 to 4, square root of x dx. If we put that in our calculator, we're going to get 5.333. So this is part A. Now for part B, find the value such that x equals h divides into two equal regions. All right. So we're looking for some vertical line. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm going to draw in a vertical line um, and just estimate, but I just, so just so you can see it. So let's say it's about here. So we're saying that there's some line H, so X equals H, where the area over here, let's call this area one, is equal to area two. Okay, that's kind of what we're going to do here now. We do know the area of the entire region, which was 5.333. Um, if you work this out by hand, it was actually 16 thirds. Um, if you integrated it and just plugged in the bounds, which was not hard to do. So I know that if I cut that in half, so I'm gonna say 16 thirds divided by two is going to be eight thirds. So what I want is for, let's say the region from here to here to be equal to 8 thirds. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we're going to say um, the integral. So we're going to go from 0 to that h value. So 0 to h. And then root x dx is equal to 8 thirds. Okay, and then we're just going to solve for h. So I'm going to go ahead and integrate. So we get x to the 1 half. So if I integrate, we're going to get x to the 3 halves power. So it's going to be x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, which is times in it by 2 thirds. And we want that to be equal to 8 over 3. I'm going to plug in my upper bound minus my lower bound. Now the lower bound is going to go to 0. Okay, so we're just really going to plug in the h. So it's going to be 2 thirds h to the 3 halves power equals 8 thirds. Okay, hopefully you're okay with that because if we subtracted um, two-thirds zero to the three halves, we're just gonna get zero. So I'm gonna multiply this by three over two. So we're gonna get h to the three halves. This will cancel, and we get four. And then I'm gonna raise this to the two-thirds power. So we get h equals four raised to the two-thirds power. Um, however you want to do this, obviously we have a calculator, so if you put it into your calculator, you're going to get 2.519. All right, for part C, let's see what they're asking us to do here. Find the volume of revolved around the x-axis, okay? So this is going to be a disk because there is no space between the area here and what we're revolving it around. So it's just going to be pi, our bounds, a to b, and then r squared dx, okay? So I've got, um, so it's gonna be pi, and then again, we're gonna go from zero to four, and it's going to be, it's root x minus zero squared dx, okay? So in this case, it's just going to be, so I'm just going to, just because this is new to us, right? This is our first FRQ that we're doing. You wanna think about it as the curve minus the axis of rotation. Obviously, if it's the axis, much easier to do because the axis of rotation would be zero, but it's a good habit to get into because if we move off of the x-axis or the y-axis, you're going to want to um, be able to come up with your radius 
uh, in terms of the axis of rotation, okay? So it's not always gonna be at, let's say, y equals zero or x equals zero. So I'm just gonna go ahead and include the zero just, just for practice, okay? So we're gonna get pi zero to four square root of x squared dx. But again, we have a calculator here, so we could just plug it in. Um, without a calculator, I believe it's eight pi, but if you just plug it into your calculator, you're gonna get about 25. 0.133. All right, last part is part D, and they are asking us to uh, the vertical line K into two equal regions equal volume. So kind of like part B, but we're talking about volume now. So we just found the volume to be 8 pi, so we know half of it would be 4 pi, okay? So we're going to do pi. Now we're talking about x equals k now, so we'll say 0 to k, and then it's going to be root x minus 0, but I'm going to say root x squared dx, and we want that to be equal to 4 pi, right? Because we want it to be two equal parts. This is one of the parts, okay? And then again, I'm just going to go ahead and solve this. Um, let's see. We could... All right, let's do this. So it's pi 0 to k. Root x squared is just x dx equal to 4 pi. You could divide over the pi if you wanted to. Let's do that. So cancel out the pi's. We're going to integrate. You get x squared over 2. And we're going to go from 0 to k equal to 4. So we could say k squared minus zero, well, k squared over two minus zero over two equals four. We get k squared equals eight. So k is equal to the square root of eight. All right, you guys, that's it for this question. I'm gonna go ahead with the next one on this same video. All right, so the second question is gonna be 1999. Question number two, again, this is a calculator question. All right, so for this question, they went ahead and they provided us with um, a, a diagram here. Okay, so find the area. All right, so that's part A. So pretty simple here. We're just going to do upper minus lower. And we're gonna go from, it's negative two to two, but we need to figure out where the points of intersection are. So our graph is x squared, and I wanna know where x squared is equal to four. So if we take the root, take the root, you get x equals plus or minus 2. So that's important. So this is negative 2, and this is positive 2. So to find the area, we're going to integrate from negative 2 to 2, upper minus lower. So it's 4 minus x squared dx. Again, calculator question, so you can just go ahead and plug this into your calculator. Um, if you did it by integration, you're going to get 32 over 3, which is about 10.666, okay? All right, for part B, find the volume around the x-axis, okay? So this is actually a, it's a washer because it's going to look like this. Let me see if I can draw this in here. Um, you know, something like this, like this, and we'll have... Kind of a loose sketch here, like that, okay? So the outer radius would be there, and the inner radius would be there, okay? So if we did the radius from here all the way out is there, and then you got your little radius there, okay? So this is a, this is a washer. And again, we're going to go from negative 2 to 2. So the formula is going to... Well, first, we need to come up with the big R. Let's do that first. So I'm going to say the big R, okay, is going to be from the x-axis to the furthest curve, which in this case is just 4. So R is 4. So R squared is 4 squared. Little r is going to be from the x-axis to the curve, okay? So the curve in this case is x squared. 
so it's going to be just simply x squared so then r squared would be x squared squared okay all right so let's drop it into the formula so we're going to go from negative two don't forget the pi negative two to two this is volume negative two to two it's going to be big r so it's going to be four squared so 16 minus x squared squared is x to the fourth dx. The rest you can just put into your calculator. You're going to get 160.849. All right, for part C, they want us to have a, a line k, y equals k. So it's a horizontal line greater than 4. So it's going to be higher than 4. So let me just draw an arbitrary line up here. Let's just say that it's up there. So we'll call this y equals k. And we want to find um, if, a, if this solid is revolved around that line y equals k, what does k have to be so that I get an equal volume to what we already found? Okay, that's basically what they're asking us to do. Now we found the, the volume in part b. So the volume was 160.849, but now to... Well, we still have a washer. We had a washer before, but this is also going to be a washer. Okay, so what we're looking at now is we're going to say from, so it's going to be pi negative 2 to 2, and we're going to have this be equal to 160.849. So again, it's just, it's, we're just really doing another washer problem, um, but we're revolving around the line y equals k, so we don't have... Um, To solve for k, we're just setting up an equation so that we could solve for k, okay? So really, I'm just going to do a washer and set it equal to the 160. So we want to do the outer radius. So again, because I know this is new, we just started doing this this week, but I think you can, you can always do the curve minus the axis of rotation or the axis of rotation minus the curve because you're squaring it, the order doesn't matter. What some people like to do, if the axis of rotation is on top of the curve, they put the axis of rotation first. It doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to do K minus the furthest curve. So the furthest curve is the parabola, right? So we're going from here to there. Okay, so that's X squared. That's my big R. So it's big R squared minus little r squared. Well, the little r is literally going to go from here to there. So it's just going to simply be k minus 4 squared and then dx. Okay? So, again, is they're not asking us to solve for k. They're just asking us to set up an, um, an, an, an integral or an equation in this case. Okay, we want it to be equal to the volume, what we found in B. So that's where the 160 is coming from. And again, K is higher than Y equals 4. So I'm just drawing a horizontal line. And then we're going to go from the axis of rotation to the furthest curve. Okay, let me see if I can graph this. Um, so it's going to look something like this, I believe. like that okay so the big r is this one here so that's your that's the outer circle and then we've got the inner circle here like that okay so to get the outer radius you're going from here all the way to there i don't know if you can follow the way i like to think of it as This is the whole thing. So if, it, if I do the whole thing minus the curve, because you always measure the curve from, from the x-axis. So this is, this is 4. This is the curve. If I do 4 minus the curve, I get the big R. Okay, so hopefully you could see that. Um, we'll continue to practice. Um, I'm going to keep going on this video. So we're going to do the third question. All right, so this one is let's see what do we have for this one 
So this is going to be the year 2000, question number one. So again, we're looking at a calculator question here. All right, so this one, again, they give us the curve. Um, so y, e, and they even labeled the curve for us. So the first thing we need to do is find the point of intersection. So go ahead and graph this on your calculator, and we're going to come up with a point of intersection. So I'm going to set um, e to the negative x squared equal to 1 minus cosine of x is what we're doing. But you could actually just graph these uh, both on your calculator and go ahead and just um, find the point of intersection. Okay, so the point of intersection is going to be at x equals... So point, you want to take this out as far as you can. So 9, 4, 1, 9, 4, 4. So I'm going to call this A just because it's easier than having to write this because that's going to be one of our bounds, right? Okay. So first part, they want the area. So we're going to do upper minus lower. So it's just simply going to be so the upper curve is e to the negative x squared. And then minus the other curve, which is going to be the 1 minus cosine of x. So this is dx. And we're going to go from 0 to this value that we just had. So try to store that into your calculator, okay? And then I'm just going to put this in my calculator. I'm going to get 0 0.590. All right, so that's part A. So find... Part B says find the volume revolved around the x-axis. So again, we're going to have a washer here. So you want to do big R minus little r. So just in terms of memorization is you can do the curve that's the furthest away from the axis of revolution. So when I look at this, I'm revolving around here. So this is a closer curve. This is the further curve. So that's my furthest curve, okay? So we're going to do pi. We're going to integrate. So from 0 to a. So the furthest curve is the e to the negative x squared. So that's big R, e to the negative x squared, and then squared, minus little r, which is the closer curve. So it's going to be 1 minus cosine of x squared, and then dx. And I believe I needed another set of parentheses, like that, okay? So this is strictly put into your calculator. You should get 1.746, okay? All right, for part C, all right, cross sections, good. All right, so this is the first cross section. Um, we haven't talked about it yet. I'll talk about it in class tomorrow. Um, whoever taught it on Friday, I think Reagan and Alex, um, they both did a great job. Is a cross section is simply, instead of revolving it, we're going to stack up these different figures. So whether it be a triangle, equilateral, isosceles, a square, a rectangle, a semicircle, we're going to stack these up. Now, what you have to understand is these are all coming out of the, um, the figure. So like if my square, this would be, let's say this is a base of a square. So whatever this distance right here that I'm drawing is how high out it's going to come. And I'm just going to find the area and find the area and find the area. And then we stack up all of these um, squares to get volume. Okay. Now it changes, right? Because if I drew a square here, is this is always going to be the base. So the great part of the, about these questions on the AP exam most of the time in part A, they want you to find the area between the curves. So you're doing upper minus lower. That's also the base of your solid. Okay, so this is the base of the square, right? So, and then this distance is how far out it's going to come, which is why we get this solid that's not uniform, okay? And then here, let's say, that's the base. So it's a much smaller square. It comes out a lot less. So all you're going to do for this is learn the formulas. You integrate area, you get volume. So we know that the area for a square is, um, well, we know it's base times height, but we can simply say it's side squared. And to get the side, it's really just the distance between the curves, okay? 
So there's not necessarily pi involved in a cross section unless you're doing a semicircle because the formula for semicircle has pi in it. Okay, so a lot of times you are literally just taking this from part A and putting it into the formula. Okay, so again, so the volume is going to be zero to A, and then it's going to be the E negative X squared minus one minus cosine of x squared dx. Put that into your calculator, you get 0.461. All right, guys, we're gonna keep going here. So this is 2001 question one. So this one, again, it looks like we're going to have to find the points of intersection. So. Let's go ahead and start with that. So you definitely want to put these into your Y1, Y2 on your calculator. So let's find the point of intersection. So we're looking at 2 minus X cubed equals tan of X. So it intersects at the point. So point nine zero. 2155 and then 1.265751. So we'll call this A and we'll call this B. Just try to store these in your calculator and use these values um, in your bounds. Okay. All right, so find the area of R. So R is right here. So this one's interesting. I think we spoke about this in class. Um, for area, they'll never tell you how you should do it. If you do left minus, I mean, right minus left, or you can do, you'd have to split it up because if, if we did upper minus lower, what you're doing here is you're looking at, you know, let me do this just to kind of hopefully you can see this here. But if we took this all away, all right, so now hopefully you can see that a little bit better. That's kind of what we're trying to do here, right? So we're just finding the area under the curve. So what's below the curve is the x-axis. Neither one of these curves is on top of each other. So you'd have to break this up here. Right, and you'd have to say the area under the curve of this curve minus zero, and then add to it the area under this curve minus zero. So let me just go back to what it was. So that's one way to do it. Or you could do right minus left, because you could say that this curve here is to the right of this curve here. So for every point, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this curve is always to the right of that one. The only problem I foresee with that one is you have to resolve this, okay? And again, it's a calculator question, so it's not a big deal, but if you wanted to solve this for x, you would actually have to do the inverse tangent, okay? So we have to say tan negative one of y equals x, and this one would be um, 2 minus y, I believe. Yeah, 2 minus y, and then the cube root, so to the 1 third power equals x. Okay, so the functions become much more complicated if you put um, it as x equals. But totally up to you. I'm going to go just go ahead and integrate. I'm, yeah, I'm going to integrate and break it up into the two parts. So we're going to go from... So 0 to A, so that's the tan of X. So hopefully you can see that. So this is the tangent curve, and then from A, so plus A, I need to find that point of intersection, which I'll do in a second, and then 2 minus X cubed DX. So the other thing I need to do is find that X intercept. Okay, so that is 2 minus x cubed. I want to find an x-intercept, so I'm going to set it equal to 0. So you get x cubed equals 2. 
x equals the cube root of 2. So that's what would go up top here. So cube root of 2. That's not, hang on. So cube root of 2, like that. Okay. And then just go ahead and put that into your calculator. Get 0.729. So that is A, and then for B, find the area of S. So S, I believe we can do a little bit differently. You can literally do upper minus lower because every point on this curve here is above up to this point here, which we found, right? We found um, the point of intersection. So for S, you can simply do from zero to A, so then the upper curve, which is two minus x cubed minus the other curve, tan of x dx. And we could put this into our calculator. So you get that 1.160, okay? And then for C, find the volume when S about the x axis. So this, let me redraw this just, again, because this is new. Eventually this will be so easy for you guys to do. So there's, part of s. So this is y equals tan of x. And then this one is, let's say something like that. Okay, so this is 2 minus x cubed. All right, so we're going to revolve it around the, um, the x-axis. So this is our axis of rotation here. Let me see if I could draw this like that. Now let's say it, it kind of looks like that, okay? So this is our outer radi radius, like that. And then this would be our inner radius. Okay, so hopefully you can see the washer there but let's go ahead and do this one. All right, so we're gonna go about the x-axis. So volume is going to be, so it's pi. And we, again, we're going from zero to a. So we need the furthest curve from the x-axis because that's my axis of rotation. So you wanna go the furthest away. So that's the two minus x cubed. So it's, it's, the, it's the furthest curve minus the axis of rotation, but that's just zero. So minus zero, it's just squared. So that's big R. And then little r is gonna be the closer curve. So again, if this is what I'm revolving it around, this curve is closer than that curve. So we're gonna do minus and then tan of x squared dx. And then just plug that in, you get about 8.3 three, one. All right, number five. So this is form B, uh, same year, I believe. No, no, I'm sorry, 2002. All right, so 2002 form B. Again, a calculator question. This is question number one. So for part A, um, again, find the area. So we're gonna need to find the point of intersection here. So just go ahead and set these equal to each other. So X cubed. So just go ahead and store it in your calculator as it's a good habit to get into. You have a function, plug it in your calculator. Okay, so four minus into the y equals. So then you can just graph these and find the point of intersection. So in this case, a or x is 1.487664. And again, we're gonna call that a. So that's that point right there. So find the area. So we're going to upper minus lower, so it's just going to be, so 0 to A, and then 4 minus 2X minus the other curve, which is X cubed, and then over 1 plus X squared, DX, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and just put that in the calculator. You get 3.214. All right, find the volume, revolve around the X axis, so again, is this is a washer, okay? Because you've got this gap in here, which is going to cause, because we're gonna have, this would be my inner part right here, 
okay? So the one that's furthest away from the x-axis is the 4 minus 2x. All right, so don't forget the pi. So we've got pi, 0 to a. So 4 minus 2x minus 0 squared. That's big R. And then minus x cubed over 1 plus x squared minus 0 squared and then dx. Okay, so when we do all that, you get 31.884, okay? All right, for part C. Ah, cross-section is a square. Yeah, so, so I think the square is the most common. But again, is you're doing it like this, perpendicular to the x-axis, so we're looking at this, like that. So that's the base of my square. So to get that length, I'm doing the upper curve minus the lower curve. So whatever cross-section we're doing, you're literally using the geometric formula for area and plugging that into the integral, okay? So like here, your square is a little bit smaller and so forth and so on, okay? And again, in, in part A, is, these are just give, gimme's on, on the AP exam because to do part A, we did upper minus lower Upper minus lower is also the length of the base. So, and we know that a square is equal to side squared, okay? So again, we integrate, so zero to A. And then I'm just gonna take from part A actually, so four minus two X minus X cubed over one plus X squared, and then DX. Put it into the calculator, you get about 8.99. Seven. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, so this is 2002, question one. So for part A, so this is the rare case. This is the one I was thinking about, um, that they don't give you a graph, but it doesn't matter. You do have a calculator, but you guys should absolutely, hands down, know what this graph looks like, okay? So e to the x looks like that, and then ln of x looks like that. All right, so let's see what the area that we're finding. Find the area between x equals 1 half and x equals 1. So it's like there to there. Actually, I think it's that too, right? Because they're not restricting us to the first quadrant or we're not bounded by y equals zero. All right, so for area, we're gonna go from one half to one and then the upper minus the lower. So it's e to the x minus ln of x dx. Put it to your calculator, you get about 1.222. All right, for part B, find the around the line y equals four. All right, so that's up top here somewhere. Let me just fix this, this was a little sloppy. It's like that, okay. So we're gonna go about this line up here. So this is y equals four. Again, it's just memorize it. It's one of the few things in AP calculus you can memorize. So the curve that's furthest away from the four is the blue curve. This is y equals ln of x, and this is y equals e to the x. Okay, so I'm gonna do, so pi, one half to one. So the big R, this is a washer, so the big R is gonna be the curve minus the furthest function, so ln of x and then minus little r, so it's four minus the closer function, squared, okay? So it's big R squared minus little r squared to get that. Calculator, we get about 23.609. Pi 
part C. All right, part C, um, they're giving us this function, h of x, is defined as f of x minus g of x. So I need to check here. But that would mean that, yeah, so it's the upper curve minus the lower curve. Find the absolute minimum. All right, so the first thing you need to think about is if you want to find an absolute max or min, you need the derivative. So I'm going to say h prime of x. So h prime of x equals f prime of x minus g prime of x. And then remember, we set that equal to 0, okay? So e to the x, because if f of x is e to the x, then f prime of x equals e to the x. And if g of x equals ln of x, g prime of x is 1 over x. Okay, so I'm just going to do f prime minus g prime. So minus 1 over x. Now, if you rem that's h prime of x. If you remember, when we do a max or min, we want to set equal to 0. So e to the x minus 1 over x equal to 0. Go ahead and solve it. Again, this is a calculator question, so I would just graph each of these functions because e to the x equals 1 over x and see where they intersect, okay? So if you do this on your calculator, you're going to get their intersection to be about 0.5, 6, 7, 1, 43, okay? But, big caveat here, right? Remember for absolute, max or min, we need to test the endpoints. So I'm going to do h of a half, h of 0.567143, and then do h of 1. So you can use your calculator again. Um, so h of 1 half is 2.314. h of 1 is 2.718. And then h of 0.56 is 2.330. So make sure we answer the question. They want the absolute max and the, and the absolute minimum. Okay. Sorry. Okay, here we go. And they want it um, value. The, so they want the absolute maximum and minimum value. So when they talk about value, we're talking about the y values here. Okay. So the absolute min is 2.330. And the absolute max is 2.718. All right, hopefully we're getting the hang as we work through these. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to keep going here. All right, number seven. I feel like we did this question. Uh, yeah, but we didn't, right? It's similar. So that's the good news about these FRQs. Um, they are somewhat predictable. I know in a lot of the things that we do, um, you're never sure what you're going to get, but you can feel pretty confident you're going to get an area, you're going to get a volume, and then maybe a cross-section if you're lucky, okay? All right, so find the area. Again, we're going to want to do points of intersection here. So we've got e to the negative 3x. Just do not hesitate to put this into your calculator. Go to the y equals, put y1, y2. So when this is equal to square root of x, okay? Again, on a graph graph it, find the point of intersection, you're going to get 0 0.2, 3, 8, 7, 3, 4, and then 0 0.488, 6, 0, 4. And we'll call this A and we'll call this B. You definitely want to use that in your, um, in your bounds. Use A and B instead of the, the, the X values. 
And another thing is, is if they give you this as f of x and g of x, you can definitely use f of x and g of x in the integrals. If they don't, you really don't want to redefine them. We're just going to have to write them out, okay? All right, so the area would be upper minus lower. So let me write this in. So this is going to be y equals square root of x. And then the other one is going to be y equals e to the negative 3x. All right, so area is upper minus lower. And we're going to go from a to 1. This is line x equals 1. Okay, so the upper curve is the root x. And then we're going to subtract from it e to the negative 3x dx. Put that in your calculator, and you're going to get 0. 0.442. All right, part B, they want us to find the volume, horizontal line y equals 1. So that's going to be here. Like that, okay? So again, this is a washer. And again, I'm not, I'm not going to show it to you, um, the drawing, but just start to learn to memorize that, well, A, it's the washer, because this line we're going around, there's a gap in here. So that's going to be that inner donut part of it, right? Okay, so you're going to do the furthest curve. So I'm thinking the furthest curve from here. So it can either be this one or this one. So which one's the furthest one? The red one is the furthest, okay? That's going to be my big R. So volume is going to be pi. And then again, the bounds are going to be the same here. So we're going from A to 1. So you could do the axis minus the curve or the curve minus the axis. I tend to put the axis of rotation first when it's above the curve, okay? But it really doesn't matter, okay? So it's going to be, this is y equals 1, sorry. So it's going to be 1 minus the furthest curve. So 1 minus e to the negative 3x squared minus little r. So it's going to be, um, again, the, the axis of rotation minus the curve. So 1 minus root x and then dx. Put into your calculator, you're going to get uh, 1.423. All right, for part C, cross section. All right, so this is a cross section. And in this case, it's a rectangle. So this is a little unusual. Um, but the base and the height aren't going to be the same. So either they have to just flat out give you the height or they give you some sort of, com not comparison, but they may say the height is twice the base or the height is something compared to the base. Okay, so they're saying that the height is five times the length of the base. So we know that the base is going to be the upper minus the lower. So the base is root x minus the lower, which is e to the negative 3x. So the height is 5, the 5b, five or 5 times the base, so it's going to be 5 root x minus e to the negative 3x. And then we're just going to put the rectangle, rectangular formula, so base times height inside the integral. So we're going to integrate. I'm going to go from A to 1. So I could take out, it's, it's this. So it's 5 root x minus e to the negative 3x and then times 5. I'm not going to do this twice, but right, it, if that's the height, then the base is just another root x minus e to the negative x. So I'm going to do this as squared dx, okay? And again, right into the calculator, um, we're going to get about 
So hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here. We like the cross sections because usually in part A, they want the area, volume is volume, and then the cross section usually requires you to find the base of the solid. And the base of the solid comes from the, the distance between the two curves. All right, here we go. So 2004, um, question B. So this one is not a calculator. I mean, I'm sorry, it is a calculator, but there's no graph drawn. So you can use your calculator to graph it. Um, but hopefully, usually when it's not no calculator, the graphs are pretty stinking easy. Okay, so we're looking at root x minus 1. So y equals root x minus 1 is shifted to the right. one unit and then this is the line of again it's not drawn to scale but it will do let's say that this is x equals 10 and we're going to find the area so for part a it's going to be the area so we need to find a well not necessarily i'm not, I'm not going to do it yet we may or may not need it um, we know that this is x equals 10 and we know that this equals 1. So I'm going to integrate from 1 to 10. Square root x minus 1 dx. Calculator, you're going to get, um, it's actually just 18. All right. So for part B, find the volume around the line y equals 3. So this point of intersection is actually at uh, 10 comma 3. But you can do it. We could say y equals root x minus 10. So y equals, uh, not, I'm sorry, minus 1, right? Yeah. And then y equals square root of 9, which is 3. All right, so for volume, we're going to do pi. And again, we're going to go from 1 to 10. So big R. Okay, so big R. Let me draw the line in here. So it's going to be... Um, the furthest curve. So the curves we're looking at here are this curve and then the zero. So the cur furthest curve actually is the x-axis. So there to there. So that distance is three. So three squared is nine. So three squared minus, and then it's going to be the axis of rotation. So three, and then minus the closer curve. So x minus one. That's a little r, and we're going to square it like that, okay? Put in the calculator, you, you get 212.058. All right, and then for part C, find the volume around the vertical line x equals 10. So this is the first time we've done this. So vertical line x equals 10. Think about it ab about like a y-axis rotation. Okay, so is this is easy three points, okay? You just have to pay attention to what you're doing. So I need my variables in terms of y inside the integral, and I need a dy as my answer, okay? So this is a disk. It's going to look like this, which makes this be the radius. And for me, um, I like to think of it as from here to there is the 10. From here to there, actually, no, take it back. From here to there is the curve. If I took that away, I'm left with the radius. All right, and then our bounds need to be in terms of y. So it's going to go pi, 0 to 3. So the furthest curve from, so 10, it's a disk, right? So it's just r squared. So it's going to be 10 minus the curve. So 10 minus y squared plus 1 squared. Now, for the r, you can do the curve minus the axis of rotation, axis of rotation minus the curve, okay? It does not matter. Dy, and you get 407. 
0.150. All right, next one is going to be 2004. And then question one. All right, for part A, so this is what I was talking about. This hasn't shown up yet either. You see how they're defining f of x and g of x? This, a put it into the y equals. That should be automatic, okay? But use f of x and g of x inside the integral instead of writing out the functions, okay? So for part A, find the area. Um, I don't think we need any points of intersection. So it's going to go from 0 to 1, upper minus lower. So the upper is, let me just, yes, the f of x. They, they even put it on the graph for us. So f of x minus g of x dx. Okay, and then go ahead and put in the calculator. You get about 1.133. All right, for part B, find the volume around y equals 2. So it's way up here. All right, so this is one where I don't really want to show it. We're just going to, we're going to know that it's going to be the big R. So big R, it's going to be the axis of rotation minus the furthest curve. Because there's two curves here, this one and this one. I claim this one is furthest from that line than this one, okay? So it's going to be 2 minus, and then the G of X is the big R. And little r is going to be 2 minus f of x, okay? So calculator. So we're going to go pi 0 to 1, and then 2 minus g of x squared, and then minus 2 minus f of x squared. And there you go. Okay, again, put that into your calculator. You get 160, no, I'm sorry, 16.179. All right, last part is C. So, I don't see what they're asking for. Um, so, for each k greater than zero, the region enclosed by the graph of h and g is the base of a solid with cross sections to the x axis. All right, so we're looking at this. There's a K, which the volume of solid is equal to 15. Okay, that's easy. Um, so, so for volume, it's going to be, so 0 to 1, and then H of X minus G of X squared. Dx. Okay. So again, I, I use the idea of a square. This side squared, and to get one side, you're doing upper minus lower, which is f of x minus g of x. So that's a side, which is also. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug in. So they're telling us that this new region is formed by h of x and g of x, um, and they, they go ahead and they define h of x. So we're gonna integrate, so zero to one. And remember, square is side squared. So h of x is kx, that's given, okay? So kx, and then one minus x, minus, and then, Sorry, 3x minus 1, root x, and then all of this is squared equal to 15. Okay, sorry about the confusion there in the end. So basically, they're redefining another function. So we're not using f of x. And then the region is formed by the graphs of h of x and g of x. Okay? All right, number 10 is 2005B. 
So let me see, 2005B, and then this is question number, this is question number one. All right, so let's see what they want here. Um, points of intersection first. So let's go ahead and set these equal to each other. So one plus sine of two X equal to e to the x over 2. Go ahead and put this in as y1, y2. And then we can find a points of intersection. I'll call them a, b. So we're going to get one point. 1, 3, 5, 6, 9. And 1, 7, 6, 4, 4, 6. All right, so find the area. So area is equal to the upper minus the lower. So we're going to go from zero to a and then upper minus lower is f of x minus g of x is that's all you want to write on your paper full credit no chance for a mistake okay we get about 0.429 all right for part b find the volume on the x-axis. So this is a uh, washer, right? We've got a big, big gap in here. So we're going around this. So again, the it's always axis of rotation, the furthest curve, and then minus the lower curve. Like that. Okay. All right, so let me see. So volume is going to be so zero to a, and then pi. So it's going to be the furthest curve, which is f of x, and then minus zero because we do the curve minus the axis of rotation, but that just gives us f of x squared minus g of x squared. All right, again, put it in your calculator. We're going to get 4.266. All right, part C. Oh, good. Uh, semicircle. Okay, so we have a semicircle. So you could just do pi over 8r squared. That works. Okay, and the reason that works is because, um, remember, it's pi r squared over 2. The radius is going to be r over 2 squared over 2. So we get pi r squared over 4 over 2, which is pi r squared over 8. So semicircles are nice. If you memorize the formula, it's pi over 8 and then r squared. Okay, and then R is going to be the distance between the two curves because we already took out the two. Okay, so we've got the integral 0 to A and then pi over 8, and then we could do just side squared, and the side is the upper minus the lower. So f of x minus g of x squared dx. Put that in your calculator, you get 0 0.077. All right, in this video, we got 2005, question one. Um, again, they're giving us f of x and g of x. You want to definitely use those in your integral. Okay, get in the habit. Okay, use the f of x, use the g of x. First, I want to do is set these equal. So we're going to do 1 fourth plus sine of pi x. And when is that equal to 4 negative x? Just go ahead and graph it. Find the points of intersection. So you're going to get um, the a is 0 0.178218.
All right, so for part A, they're asking us for the area. So you can definitely do upper minus lower. So just look at this carefully. But every um, point on this curve is higher than the point on this curve. So we can do top minus bottom, um, upper minus lower. So when I say upper or top, you have to imagine you're on the x-axis. So the one that's furthest away that's on top is um, the one that's above it. Okay, so that one I believe is the g of x. So we're going to go 0 to a, and then g of x minus f of x dx, and we're going to get about 0 0.064. All right, for part b, find the area of s. Again, we could do upper minus lower. It's a pretty easy question. Um, so we're going to get, um, just the only thing that's changing is the bounds because the first one went from zero to there. This one's going from here to here. Um, I don't know if they told us that in the question. Yeah, you definitely have to, to get both points of intersection here. And I believe the other point of intersection is one. So we're going to go from A to one. And then f of x minus g of x dx. We get 0 0.410. And then for c, around the horizontal line, y equals negative 1. All right, so this one's pretty straightforward, I think. It's right there. So the furthest curve um, for the region for s is going to be here because that's furthest away, and then this one would be the closer one. So up to you, if you want to stay consistent, you can do um, negative 1 minus f of x, or you could do f of x minus a negative 1, okay? So again, I like to do the one that's on top. If the line's up here, I do the line minus the curve. If the line's down here, I do the curve minus the line. So we're going to get pi a to 1, so I'm going to do the curve, so f of x minus negative 1 squared, and then g of x minus minus 1 squared. Obviously, you could put plus 1, but just trying to show all my steps here, so 4.559. All right, so here we go. Yes, 2006 form B, question one. Again, a calculator question. Um, so they're giving us two regions. For part A, they want us to find the area of R. So let's see. First thing we're going to need to figure out here um, is where R crosses the x-axis. So that's the first thing I need to figure out. So we're going to go from this point here to zero. So I'm just going to, again, input the function into my calculator um, that they give us, and then we want to find the x-intercept, okay? So we're going to do, let's say, f of x equal to zero. So just graph f of x. So we're going to graph, I'm just going to write graph f of x, and then find x-intercept. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that in my calculator. Um, it intercepts the x-axis at x equals negative 1.37312. So that's my x-intercept. So again, I'll call this A. So for part A, we're going to integrate. So we're going to go from A to 0, and then f of x dx. Okay, again, because I really encourage you to use the f of x or g of x if they give that to you in place of the function. Okay, so we're going to get about 2.903. So that's part A. For part B, find the volume around the horizontal line, negative 2. So we're looking about here. So we'll say y equals negative 2. And again, we're 12 into this already, so um, I'm not going to explain it too, too much. But you want to go, it's going to be the curve minus the axis of rotation or the axis of rotation minus the curve. I prefer to do the one that's on top. Um, and again, you're going to go to the furthest curve. So when I look at this, we're looking at this region. 
so the two curves it's bounded by are this curve here, f of x, and this curve here, which is the x-axis. So from here to there is further than from here to here, okay? So we're going to do, so it's pi, and then same bounds as, as the area, so a to 0, and then it's going to be um, f of x minus a negative 2. So it's f of x plus 2 squared. That's my big R because we're doing minus a negative, which is positive, squared. And then if I did 0 minus a negative 2, which is 2, and then 2 squared is 4. So minus 4 dx. So this is a washer. Um, this is the big R here, and this is the little r there, okay? And then r squared and r squared, okay? For this, again, we're going to get 59.36. All right, so for C, it's, um, it's a little bit of a challenging question. So for C, what they want us to do is write to find the air, um, the volume, I guess. Is it volume or area? Um, blah, blah. Oh, find the area. So we want to find the area of S. So we need to figure out um, the bounds. Now, we know it's going to go from 0 to some point on the x-axis, and they don't really give us much information here, okay? So, I need to find points of intersection. So, we have a tangent line. So, if you look here, this is the tangent line to this curve. So, we know that the slope of the line is also going to be the slope of the tangent line to that curve. So, what I need to do is find the derivative of r. So, I went ahead and I did that. So I found the derivative of f of x, which is the function that bounds r. And I got this, and I plugged in 0. So the slope of that tangent line is negative 1 half. So that's helpful. So we could write the equation of L is going to be y equals negative 1 half x plus. So now to find the area, all we're doing is upper minus lower. We just found the upper curve, and we know that the lower curve is, this is all one curve. Okay, so this is also f of x. So I'm going to say the area of s, so area of s, it's going to be from 0 to some point, which we're going to find that in a second. Um, and then it's going to be the upper curve. So it's negative 1 half x plus 3 minus the lower curve. So that's just the function that they give us dx and then we need to come up with the other point of intersection so what you could do here is you could go to your calculator plug in the function so i'm going to plug in this function here the line and then i'm going to plug in this curve which you should have stored on your calculator anyways graph them both and find this point of intersection so i'm going to call that b and that point of intersection is three point three eight nine eight seven so we're going to put that there and all they want you to do is to write but not evaluate so that would be part c all right next one we got is 2006 question one so again a calculator question um is most of them are calculator but there are some no calculator ones so of course we'll try to practice that um next week uh, once we go over, we're going to re, re go over some of the integration techniques, okay? But uh, for their test, I'm thinking two, two calculator questions and one non-calculator question. But we'll see what I can find, okay? All right, so for part A, we have the ln of x, and then I have the line y equals x minus 2. So it looks like we're going to need points of intersection. So just go ahead and input to your calculator. Um, so we're going to set ln of x equal to x minus 2. Go ahead and graph that. So I believe you're going to get, so, so there's two points of intersection here. I don't know if you can see it, but we've got this one here. So this x value here, and then this x value there. So the points of intersection are, uh, let's see, so x equals 0.158, and again, I'm just using my calculator for this, and 3.14619. Okay, so those are my two points of intersection. They want the area of R. So I'm going to call this A and call this B. Okay, so the area 
of r is going to be from a to b and then the upper curve minus the lower curve. So we have ln of x minus x minus 2 dx. And we're going to get 1.949 for that. All right, for part b, find the volume around the line y equals negative 3. So we're looking at this here. Now, I'm not certain if, um, I guess you would have to plug it in to get the y coordinate. So you can definitely look at it on your graph to see how low that this point of intersection is. But I don't think it's going to affect how we do this, this problem. Okay, so, so we're going to say it's, so the volume is equal to pi. And again, we're going from A to B. And then um, you can do, so I like to do whichever is on top. And again, you're going to do the furthest curve. So the furthest curve is the ln of x because it's the furthest curve with respect to the axis of rotation. So from here to there is further than from here to here. Okay, again, this is a washer. So we're going to do ln of x minus a negative 3, so plus 3 squared. So that's the big R. And then minus, so x minus 2 plus 3 squared, which is the little r. And again, just put it into the calculator, you get 34.199. Like that. All right, so for part C, so we're going about the y-axis. So this is the first one, I believe, that we've done about the y-axis. Um, so again, same concept, we're just, well, A, we're going in this direction here, so like this, and you're still going to go, so if this is my axis of rotation, the furthest curve now is the line, the closer curve now is that. So that's the easy part. You just want to make sure um, that it's still a washer, and you, you are doing the bigger r minus the little r. Now, a couple things we do have to do is we have to rewrite these equations. So if this is y equals ln of x, I'm going to e both sides. So e to the y equals x. So that is actually the furthest curve. No, nope, my bad. That's the closer curve because that's this one here. That's this. So that's just going to be with the little r. And then the big r is going to be the line. But again, we need to resolve it. So we have y plus 2 equals x. That's going to be my bigger r because that's from here all the way to there. Okay? All right, so let me get the integral set up. So volume is going to be pi. Now, the bounds we, we, we don't have yet. So it's going to be the further curve, the bigger one, which is y plus 2. So big r squared and then minus little r squared and then dy. The only catch here is we have to get the y values of this point of intersection. So when I did this up here, I should have found the y coordinate as well. All right, so I just put in my calculator again to get the bounds. So this upper bound, the y value is 1.146. And then let me get the lower bound. And I get negative negative 1.841. Negative 1.841. So all I did was re-graph it. Um, because when I started this, I only wrote the two x int uh, intercepts where it intersects. Okay, I only wrote the x values. So I went, just went back in and plugged in the graphs again to get the y values at each of those points. All right, so next one is 2007 form B. All right, let's see what we got going on here. This one's a little funky looking. Uh, question one, so again, it's a calculator question. Um, find the area of R. So R is just this area in here. So we're gonna need points of intersection here. Um, 
So I'm going to go ahead and set this equal to 2 to see where those points of intersection are. So I'm looking for this one here and this one here. So I'm going to say e 2x minus x squared equal to 2. And again, I'm just going to graph it. Um, so there's two x values. So I'm going to say the first one is 0 0.446. 0, 0.5, 7, and then 1.5, 5, 3, 9, 4, 3. So those are the two x-intercepts. So I'm going to integrate here for A. We're going to go um, upper minus lower, and we're going to go just from the two values that I just found. So we're going to say from A to B, and then the upper curve minus the lower curve. So E and then 2x minus x squared minus 2 dx, and that's going to give me the area, okay? So it's 0.514. All right, for part B, find the area of S. So this one's a little weird. Um, so now I need to figure out when this curve equals 1. So I'm looking here at this. And this, now obviously one of them is zero. It looks like the other one is two, but I would just to, I mean, to be safe, but honestly, you can do this algebraically. So you get E and then two X minus X squared equals two. No, I'm sorry, that makes no sense. It has to be equal to one, yeah. So that means that e to the 0 is 1. So I know that 2x minus x squared equals 0. So you get x, x minus, I did that backwards. All right, take out the x. We get 2 minus x equals 0. So we get x equals 0 and x equals 2. But again, you're free to just input it into your calculator um, to do that. All right, so now we just want s. So that's going to be in here. So in order to calculate the area of S, we are going to go from, so we're going from 0 to 2. So 0 to 2. Now, we could, if, if we integrated the curve, let's just say we did the curve. So we did it, um, let me color this in. If you did the curve, so the upper curve as this, and the lower curve as one, you're gonna get all of that area. So zero to two, so let's do e to the two x minus x squared, and then minus one. So upper minus lower is going to give me all of that, and then what you're going to do there, well, let's get the answer to this. So put in your calculator. I get 2.06016, but I'm going to take away the area of R, because if I take away R, that's this, I'm left with just S, okay? And then you're going to get, now we found R from above, so we're going to get 1.546, okay? And then for part C, um, so we're going to rotate it around y equals 1. So we're looking at r. So if we're doing r and s, let me get rid of some of this here. Hold on. So if we did r and s around 1, it would be a disk. But if I just do r, it's going to be a washer because think of it like this. All right, that's kind of what we're looking at here, okay? And then this would be the line we're going about like that, so we're definitely gonna get a washer. Okay, so you're gonna do big R. So big R is going to be from the one all the way out to the curve, to the, 
to the curvy curve, if you will, right? That's the e to the 2x minus x squared. So we're going to say from, so it's pi, so this is volume, and we're going to go from a to b. So I like to do the one that's on top. So the curve is on top, the axis of rotation is underneath it. So we're going to do e, and then 2x minus x squared, minus 1 squared, and then minus, so, so, so this is bounded by this here and this here. So this one is the bigger radius, and that's the smaller radius. So just follow the steps, okay? It's going to be the curve minus the axis of rotation. So it's 2 minus 1 squared, and then dx, and they do not want us to evaluate, so we're done with this question.